There is nothing called a gift of dreaming in the word of God. Everybody dreams. As long as you sleep, you dream. Gifts of the Lord are not given to everybody. They are given according to the will of God. When we are talking of a gift of healing, it's not everyone who has it. Once everyone has it, it's no longer a gift. When we are talking of a gift of interpretation of tongues, it's now different from speaking in tongues. Because the Bible says everyone who believes shall speak in tongues. Just to say, Holy Spirit, I worship your name today. Say, I glorify your presence in my life. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for your touch. Can we read the Bible? It's, uh, can we read together uh, these chapters? Hallelujah. Let's start from verse 19. One, two, three, everybody. Here comes that dreamer. They said to each other, verse 20, Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we will see what comes of his dreams. Hallelujah. Let's kill him and throw him into one of these old cisterns. We can say that a vicious animal ate him up. We'll see what his dreams amount to. Hallelujah. Now everybody, I want you to lift your hands right now. I want you to say every dream. That is from God. It shall amount to something in my life. It shall manifest in my life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every dream that I dreamed. If I ever dreamt counting money. I am going to count that money. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let every dream, let every dream manifest in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, my Lord, for manifestation of every dream in my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's begin to pray for our dreams now. Father, we are praying. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are praying for manifestation of every dream. In the mighty name of Jesus, let there be manifestation of every dream. Every dream in the name of Jesus Christ, we bless your holy name right now for manifestation of dreams. In Jesus' name, we release your anointing now. We release your presence right now. We release your glory right now. We release your anointing now. In the name of Jesus, more da grade we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, every dream, every dream, every prayer, every glory, every deliverance, we release, we release, we release, we release every deliverance that happened in dreams. We are releasing now. Jebra de gamandai, mazu de bre de gemondai, mo de gre de bobo jebadai, mo ze de bedai. We thank you, Father. We glorify your name in Jesus' mighty name. May we all say amen.
the brothers of Joseph. We are still continuing. This is part two on uh, unlocking the dynamic of dreams, understanding the dynamics of dreams. Hallelujah. I spoke a lot of things last week. I covered ground in my teaching on dreams. How many benefited on that teaching? Hallelujah. And um, I'm continuing today. So we see here Joseph having a dream and his brothers hear it and he brings another dream again and they hear it and we see they are now even becoming jealous of dreams that haven't happened. Which means in their culture they were taught according to the word that they were receiving from their fathers. That a dream is a powerful thing if it's coming from God. I think last week we distinguished between a demonic dream an activity dream and also how to distinguish a godly dream. Hallelujah. So I think that one is settled. So here he is receiving dreams from God. Prophetic dreams. And the brothers we are seeing they are even planning to kill Joseph. Why? Because they understood that dreams from God they do happen. They do manifest on earth. Hallelujah. And they knew that one day these dreams were going to manifest. And the challenge was the dream. The type of dreams which Joseph was dreaming, he was dreaming his brothers bowing down to him. So that is something which they didn't want. And they saw also something that I want you to notice. When you have a godly dream, they saw the faith that was in Joseph. That for sure Joseph believed that it was God. Which means they were taught to distinguish between demonic dreams and godly dreams and even other dreams. So he knew for sure that his dreams were from God. Because mind you, even Joseph prayed for the ability to interpret dreams. He could interpret dreams. We shall touch that. So we are seeing him here believing his dreams to an extent that even his brothers became jealous and they wanted to kill him because of dreams that hadn't happened. Let's all say dreams are powerful. Dreams are powerful. Say I will believe dreams from God. I will, I will believe that they will happen. So I said, when you are dreaming, it will be happening. When you dream being a governor, you dream again. Because God was bringing these dreams to, to Joseph in different ways and different pictures, but it was just one and the same thing. Even his, father's, his father even was challenged and he was saying, so you mean we are going to bow down to, to you? Because he would even tell them that I, I, I dreamt uh, such dreams like this. And they were challenged about those dreams. Because Joseph, when he was expressing his dreams from God, he really had faith. And I said even Solomon received money. He became rich not because a man of God laid hands on him, but it was in a dream. God gave him a dream. And he saw in a dream God asking him what? Solomon, ask me whatever you want, I will give you. After he had given an offering of a thousand animals to God. And he said, I want wisdom. And God said, since you have asked wisdom, I am not only going to give you wisdom, but I am also going to give you riches. And we see Solomon becoming after that, when he woke up, he had no money. He only had a dream. But he knew that his dreams were from God. The money which he received in the dream, he believed that it would manifest in the physical. 
and he prayed about it and I said, after dreaming a godly dream, you must sow an offering. You must give an offering. Solomon gave an offering, a big offering. He bent animals before God. He offered. I was saying many people dream counting money, but they never count that money. Why? Because you have done nothing about the dream. What did you do to make that dream to manifest? So I said you must sow a seed for that dream and say I am going to be rich. Solomon then became rich because of a dream. There was no prayer that was offered to Solomon. He just believed in a godly dream. Hallelujah. Let's all say dreams are powerful. First Kings 3.15 Then Solomon awoke. He realized it had been a dream. He returned to Jerusalem, stood before the ark of the Lord's covenant and sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then he gave a feast for all his court. He is sacrificing burnt offerings, not burnt offering. It's not one. It's offerings. Fellowship offerings just because of that dream. And this is how Solomon became a great person. But I said it's not every dream that is a godly dream. If you were not here, you are behind by last week's CD or a DVD because I don't want to go back there again. Now let's uh, give me Numbers 12. Verse 6, God said, listen to my words. When a prophet of the Lord is among you, I reveal myself to him in visions. I speak to him in dreams. Now listen very well and uh, look up here. There is no person who has got a gift of dreams. Because I have heard some people saying, I have got a gift of dreaming. There is nothing called a gift of dreaming in the word of God. Who, who is dreamt sometime, something before. Can you lift your hand? Lift your hand. Can you look at look, everyone who is lifting hand, look around. Can you see everyone has dreamt? So does it mean all these people have a gift of dreaming? Everybody dreams. As long as you sleep, you dream. So that's why there is no gift because the gifts of the Lord are not given to everybody. They are given according to the will of God. When we are talking of a gift of healing, it's not everyone who has it. Once everyone has it, it's no longer a gift. When we are talking of a gift of interpretation of tongues, it's now different now from speaking in tongues. Because the Bible says everyone who believes shall speak in tongues. It's a blessing for everybody. Everybody can speak. But interpretation of dreams, of interpretation of tongues, it's now a gift. now, Because it's not everyone speaking in tongues who can interpret those tongues. Then when you read in 1 Corinthians, many people confuse let, let me show you something because I just want to explain this so that you understand what I mean when I say once it's everyone, then it's no longer a gift. When you read, can you give me 1 Corinthians 12, 
verse 28. In the church, God has appointed first of all apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles. Also those having gifts of healing, those able to help others, all these are gifts. Those with the gifts of administration, like Mr. Nam, it's a gift of administration. Was you can see it. That this man, he thinks administration, he sees administration, it's in him, he talks administration, he breathes administration. Because it's a gift. There is a gift of administration. And now, those speaking in different kinds of tongues, now it's, it's not tongues that everyone speaks in the church. These are called different kinds of tongues. But I want you to use the King James Version there. Can you give me with the King James Version? It's called diversities of tongues. The gift of diversities of tongues. Like that gogo -go that came on my birthday, gogo -go guangwaza. She has that gift. She can change levels and enter the realm of archangels. And speak tongues of archangels. When she starts to speak those tongues, all of you, you keep quiet. You do nothing but to enjoy listening. Because they quieten all of you. It's a gift of, di of varieties of tongues. But Mark 16, verse 15. Can you give me that one? Mark 16, 15. He says... Go into all the world, preach and publish openly the good news, the gospel to every creature, which is of the whole human race. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Verse 17. And these signs will accompany those who believe. These signs will accompany. Now, these are signs. Which are the signs God is talking about which will accompany those? In my name they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. How many believe? Lift your hand if you believe. So God is saying if you believe you must speak in new tongues. But now when you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 there is a gift now called the gift of varieties of tongues. It's different from general tongues. This is under signs that will accompany believers. These new tongues. But on gifts, it's now diversity of tongues. Interpretation of tongues. That is now a gift. So which means... When we are time of worship, everyone is allowed to speak in tongues. But when you now have got another, there is another gift called prophetic tongues. I have seen only one, that mama, that one in hosting. Yeah, who has that gift? When she starts to speak, you can hear that it's no longer worship, it's God speaking. Those tongues now are the ones that need interpretation, not general tongues. General tongues for a believer to worship in the house, they don't need interpretation. But prophetic tongues, which quietens all the tongues, and they shoot, there is, there is a certain action, a certain anointing, where you can sense now, there must be something God is saying. And now, there is no need of an interpreter, a person with the interpretation of tongues. Why am I saying so? I want to help you because some of you, you came to, from mainline churches where they were telling you, why do you speak in tongues? The Bible says there must be an interpreter. No, the tongues that need an interpreter are prophetic tongues, not every tongue. Did you get it? So that is the same on dreams. Dreams, let's go back to Numbers 12, verse 6. 
Numbers 12, verse 6. Listen to my words. When a prophet of the Lord is among you, which means now God is saying, when a prophet is among you, a prophet, when you are dreaming at a high rate, godly dreams, God is saying that only happens to a prophet. So which means dreams are a weapon of the prophetic ministry. Godly frequency in godly dreams are a weapon of prophets of prophets. Though everyone dreams godly dreams but the frequency of godly dreams in your life when it's high then it means you must be a prophet so which means if eagle life has people who dream every day then which means eagle life is full of prophets <laughs> which is not true Because prophets are in the realm of frequency of dreams. So which means when you are not a prophet and you are having too many dreams which you don't even understand, you need deliverance. There is a challenge there. Because you are not qualified in this category. There is something wrong with you. It's not normal to dream. When you sleep in the morning, you dream. When you sleep in the afternoon, you dream. Even in church, you dream. <laughs> Everywhere you are just dreaming. I said usually those people who are just dreaming every time, check their background. They come from apostolic churches. Because it's a spirit now that operates there. It's not a gift. It's a spirit of the devil that needs deliverance. Because their churches are operated on dreams, but not on the word of God. The word is not preached. You just have to come with what did you dream. Anything that you dreamt is interpreted. Even five eggs that broke in your dream, they are given a meaning. That you are going to die five times. <laughs> the category of frequency of dreams, it must be a prophet. And the second category, where you find the frequency of dreams in a person's life, let's go to Joel 2.20. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Uh, do I, can I see old men? Old men. You are old men. You are an old man. What, what is, according to the Bible, an old man? How many years is uh, when we say to a, a man is old? Hmm? What is the definition of an old man? According to the word of God, an old man is a person above 70 years. Because that one is no longer functioning. <laughs> you are expected at that level that you are now sleeping too much. How many are more than 70 years here? Go, go, can you come? Go, go, can you come? Can you come? Can you come? Can you come? Bring it. 70. This is an old man. 
Can you come? Man? Just let maybe some don't know. Can you come? You understand? I want to use you as an example. Just look at people. Just look at people. You see Baba here. The Bible is saying this man that you are seeing here is the one in the category of dreaming. And go, go here. The Bible is saying, you old men who dream dreams. Saga, if Kulu here, go, go, come. If he comes and say, Jesus, I had a dream. I will open my ears. Why? Because the Bible says you old men who dream dreams. So which means they are supposed to dream of Atana in Shona Vatana Vacharota Ope. So which means anyone below this man is young. Anyone below go go here, you are young. And you must see visions. So these are the people who now can no longer be mobile like you. They are no longer active like you. They sleep. And God now knows to communicate with them because they have seen many things in life. They cannot misinterpret. Dreams come to them. So it's their realm. They are now in the realm where they are now allowed to dream with a certain frequency. So it's two prophets in this age. Are the people that must be called dreamers. Let's clap hands for them in the mighty. You can take your seat. You can take your seat. Sixty years, you can still be married. Or you can still marry. Seventy now, uh, it's now difficult. That's why the Bible says widows that are supposed to be supported in, in Timoth yeah. at least 60 years yeah. and above are the widows that the Bible says must be supported in the church. Not younger widows. The Bible says let them not be idle in the house of God. Let them go and use their hands and work. If you are below 60, the Bible says, go and work. Joyce Mayer is now 60 something years old, but she preaches like she's 40. The Bible says those are still young people. So, senior people, senior people, in the Bible, you are young people. Murima youth. <laughs> seventy. The Bible says at seventy in Psalms is the number of years that I am now giving to a man. From there, when you are going up, you are now old. This one says, no widow. First Timothy 5, 9. No widow may be put on the list of widows unless she is over 60 and has been faithful to her husband. Not only over 60. <laughs> but you must have been faithful to your husband. So when you are below 60, don't come to us and trouble us. And when you are over 60, but we know you were not faithful to your husband, continue doing what you were doing to get your money. You are not supposed to be on the list. You have got a certain pattern that gives you money. Young men shall see visions. Which means, what is a vision? A vision is seeing pictures. 
when your eyes are open. Do you know what it means? It means you must be active. Which means young people, when you are working at work, you can get in the spirit and start to see visions like you are watching a television on a big screen. So God is saying you are no longer, you are not in the realm where you are allowed to be lazy. Sleeping is for lazy people. But God is saying these old people can dream dreams not because they are lazy, but their body is now failing them. So they are now in a realm where they can sleep frequently and now God can now trust them with the dreams. Not a young person, a person below this age which I brought here saying you are dreaming every day. Ah, it's a sign you sleep too much. <laughs> you are too less. You have a spirit of laziness. You need to go and work. So these are the realms. The old man who dream dreams. Your young men who see visions. In faith in God ministries, a youth according to our constitution is any person below 40 years. Anyone below 40 years is still a youth in fig. That's why I want some young couples now there is now a law that all young couples who are three years in marriage or below, like Pastor Ed, they must come to the second service as well, not only first service. <laughs> Why? Why? Now, let me show you. Why is Archbishop saying that? Because the youth, they need these people who are young couples. For them to get advice and also an example among them. So they will start to admire when they see Pastor Edu who was a youth with them, with his wife. They will start to admire that life. So Archbishop was saying, no, it's, it's not good for youths to just have services on their own without that group. So we need, that's why even a FM, anyone, even if you are married, if you are below 40, you go to the youth camp. Why? Because they want you to mix with the youth so that at least you encourage the youth. When you are coming holding your wife in the youth meeting and they knew you were a brother, you were a sister, it inspires them that I want to be like that. So I am encouraging young couples who are below three, who wedded here, to actually have contact with the youth, to attend youth services. To come to the youth. I am begging you so that you make an extra mile of coming to that service because you are very important for me. Your presence in that second service is so powerful so that these young men, these young women may have something to emulate. That we want to be like this. So it helped me when I was a youth. I was saying, oh, Baba, that's why you were bringing Archbishop some of the youth in our youth. Because our advisors in youth ministry were not... People who were above maybe five years in marriage, it was two years, three years. Those are the ones that were coming to talk to youth and to also participate. So which means even the youth committee, you need a couple like that, two or three. Like Pastor Eddie and Mrs. Eddie. And another maybe, I don't know why I'm mentioning because I, I usually see them there. You incorporate them. Because they now have got a certain way of thinking. Though they are still youthish in their marriage. But they can assist you. To answer certain answers. Because they are just coming from your group. And they are still within that range. So youths can understand them. They can listen to them. Than bringing an old couple. In the youth service. Because even the gap is too big. 
Because when you talk of an iPad, Kulu does not know an iPad. Because in their generation, they had no computers. They were writing letters. So you can mistake an iPad for a demon. The generations are too wide apart. <laughs> Genesis 41, 15 to 16. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream. No one can interpret it. But I have heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. You can interpret it. When you hear a dream, you can interpret it. Which means... Now, check this. It's not everybody who can interpret a dream. Because Pharaoh is calling all magicians. He is bringing them to himself. He had a dream and no one can, could interpret that dream. But there is one guy who was there, a cup bearer, who said, No, I know of a guy in the prison called Joseph. We once had dreams when we were there. I forgot to tell you about that, how I came out. He interpreted our dreams. And they came true as he interpreted. Says now a young Hebrew was there, verse 12, with us a servant of a captain of the guard. We told him our dreams and he interpreted them for us giving each man the interpretation of the dream. And things turned out exactly as he interpreted them to us. I was restored to my position and the other man was hanged as he interpreted. Verse 14. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph and he was quickly brought from the dungeon. When he he had shaved and changed his clothes. He came before Pharaoh. And Pharaoh is saying, I heard that you can interpret dreams. Which means even the magicians, the magicians cannot interpret godly dreams. It's not easy to interpret a dream. It's not everybody who can interpret a dream. It's a gift given to people with a prophetic inclination. Because there are some who are prophets and some who have the gift of prophecy. Those are two different people. A gift of prophecy, it assists a prophet. But having a gift of prophecy does not make you a prophetess or a prophet. It's a gift. That, and a prophet is an office with gifts. Dreams, visions, interpretation, healing, miracles, many other things are put in that office. So, having ability to see visions, it does not make you a prophet. It makes you a young man <laughs> who can see visions. Because there is a difference between a gift and office. They are two different. Daniel 5.11 There is a man in your kingdom who has a spirit of holy gods in him. It's a spirit of holy gods in him. They, because they are using the word G because to them they believed in small gods. So in the time of your father, he was found to have insight, intelligence and wisdom like that of gods. King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father, the king, I say, appointed him chief of the magicians, enchanters, astrologers, and 
diviners. Can we go to verse 12? Why? Because he had ability to interpret dreams. This man, Daniel, whom the king called Belteshazzar, was found to have a keen mind and knowledge and understanding and also the ability, the ability to interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve difficult problems. Call for Daniel and he will tell you what the writing means. He can interpret riddles. He can solve difficult problems. Why? Because he has the ability to do that. He has the gifting, the power, the capacity to do that. The word ability, it is talking of a, a, an empowerment from God. It's a special thing. That's why he became chief among magicians, astrologers, diviners. The king had to make him the governor of these people because in him there was a spirit that others didn't have. So, which means, now look at me very well. When you have got a dream that you think is from God and it's confusing you, you don't have the ability to interpret that dream. There must be somebody with the ability. So dreaming does not mean you can actually start to interpret that dream. There is now need of Daniel. And check who is Daniel. Daniel is among prophets. The books of the Bible were arranged according to what we call canonization of scripture. They were not arranged according to the years they were written. But the canon of scriptures which was done by scholars who put what we now call the Bible together. They were using what we call Canonization. They were saying, we want to put major prophets on their own. So that's why you see it's Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel. And from Ezekiel, you go to Daniel, Hosea. They are put, they are among any book that is more than 12 chapters or it is 12 chapters. It's categorized among major prophets. So these were major prophets. But they were majors like Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah. Then we come to Daniel, 12 chapters. We come maybe to Hosea, 12 chapters. Then we come to what are called minor prophets, Habakkuk. We are now coming to Malachi, Zechariah. Those Zechariah is many chapters, but is put among minor prophets. So he is a prophet. Just like Joseph. It's not everybody who can interpret dreams. There must be a spirit. That person must be a general or something for them to do that. That's why am I doing this? I'm trying to avoid you having a child inside a believer sitting next to you saying I can interpret dreams. And you confuse each other inside there. And you destroy each other's life. It's an ability. Let's also say it's an ability. <laughs> now, though it's an ability, but there are certain things which we can interpret as long as they are within the constitution of the word of God. They are within the context of the word. There is one, what we call typology in the Bible. Types. 
If now it takes a man who reads the Bible to interpret, that one is a level which you can actually use to interpret a dream on your own without calling for a man of God or anyone with that ability to interpret. For example, bread. It's obvious if you read the Bible, bread, it talks of Jesus. It talks of the word of God. It talks also of what is the other typology of bread. Bread typ typifies a prosperous economy. That's why we say bread basket. When God says, I have visited you with bread, it means the prosperity. So now, you dream, or bread, it means the word of God. So it means almost more than four things. It typifies those things. Then you dream in your dream, you are picking bread and giving it to sheep. You sleep, you dream that dream, it comes again for the second time. Then that dream, it's obvious that God is telling you, you are either a pastor or a preacher. Sheep are people that come, believers, and you are picking bread and you are feeding them. Like all of you, you come here on a Sunday because I am a shepherd. I am picking bread and giving you today bread of dreams. So you are using typology of the word of God. Then you dream falling into a pit that is endless. and you are crying until you wake up and you are sweating. The Bible says hell is no end. It's a bottomless pit. With, it's a bottomless pit. It is no bottom. That's why the Bible says in the last days when God shall judge the devil, he shall be thrown into a bottomless pit. Now, I want you to understand what it means. It means that devil, for the rest of his life, he will be falling and never reaching the bottom. <laughs> Demons will be crying, ah! without an end. I don't know how God has designed that pit. But it's from everlasting to everlasting, falling, which means there will be no time the devil will be standing. He will be just falling. So when you dream such a dream and you are in the church, God simply is telling you you are on your way to hell. Which means he's rebuking you of a certain behavior or a character that you are portraying in the house of the Lord. So that one, you can use typology. It's done at Bible school, that course of typology. Then you dream drinking water. And that water which you have drunk, starts to come out of your mouth continuously. <sighs> like a horse pipe. It's obvious, the Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Which means God is saying there is now life in you. You can give life to other people. That one does not need a prophet to come. It needs you to know the word of God. It's a level.
you dream dogs biting you. All people that had the spirit of witchcraft were eaten by dogs like Jezebel. If you have read your Bible, if you know the word, it's simple. God is trying to say, be careful. See that there is witchcraft attacking you. Jezebelic spirit wants to destroy you, so you must pray. Because the Bible even says there are dogs in the church, in the book of Revelations. Dogs are among you. It's witchcraft. Now when you dream, you are among dogs. <laughs> Be very careful. You now need deliverance from witchcraft. <laughs> because you are among. They are not biting you. Biting is an attack. Now when you dream picking and reaping fruit, we all know it's barrenness according to the word of God. A woman dreaming just every time you are, you are saying you are complaining, but they are not, they are not reaping these fruits. But dreaming with a basket full of fruits and you are eating them. Is now different from eating meat. Because meat is to do with witchcraft. Because the Bible says in Revelations they will be eating their flesh, even in Jeremiah. Witches they eat even in hell, witches who were eating flesh on earth, they will be eating their flesh every day. You must eat your flesh in hell. Now, you are eating, but usually when you are dreaming meat, it's not you, it, it's someone giving you. They will be giving you meat now. It's witchcraft now. But when you are picking fruits, God is trying to say, check your life, you are fruitful. So you must prophesy that fruitfulness. In Eagle Life here, because we are called Eagle Life Assembly, it's an anointing of eagles. So you discover there are many people in this church who dream flying on top of buildings every time because it's an anointing of the house. Once you dream that flying over buildings is a sign of victory, that you are now flying above circumstances. How many without lying you have dreamt some time flying? Can you check at the number? Lift them very high if you have dreamt flying. Because it's a sign of the anointing in the house. So which means you must fly. Because I dream flying almost many times. And I now even believe I can fly. Because it's too frequent. Hallelujah. Amen. Then, for example, you dream seeing something falling. It's like an object. And it crashes on the floor and it's broken. And you start to take the broken pieces and you are putting them together. You dream it again. And you are looking even for some lost pieces under tables under, and you are picking them and you are bringing them to make a complete object as it was. Then there are two things. It's either you are an evangelist because they pick broken pieces and they put them together. They pick lost pieces. Lost souls. Or you have got a gift of encouragement. You must encourage people that are heartbroken. 
So that does not need a man of God to interpret as long as you know the word of God. Then I said last week, check if your dream is an activity dream. That is not of God. If you were thinking about it, if you were desiring it, if you dream it, it's Ecclesiastes 5.3. It's not a demonic dream. It's not a godly dream. It's a general dream which need no worry. Don't even pay attention to it. It's not God even talking to you. Because God wants to talk to us, but when it's an activity dream, this one. For a dream comes with much business and painful effort. There is much business. There is effort, maybe you have, so your subconscious mind can record and you can dream it. Let's say you dream, you were thinking and talking about Lionel Messi, there is soccer. <laughs> now, you don't stand up and say, God spoke to me about Lionel Messi. You were watching soccer. And you were talking too much about lying on mercy. So it's obvious your subconscious it must have recorded that type of a dream. So that is a dream that comes through much activity. Activity going around your mind. Dreaming. For example, a giraffe beating you. There is no scripture about the giraffes beating people. <laughs> Don't look for interpretation because it's, no, it's not in typology. It's not according to the constitution of the word of God. But dreaming a vulture eating your body, that is spirit of death. Because vouchers, they used to eat dead bodies in the Bible. You have done something wrong. You are now powerless. You dream. You have a bald hair. And the hair is beginning to grow. It's biblical because the Bible says when they had shaved Samson's hair, at a certain time, it began to grow again. So which means it's a restoration. The, why, why am I giving you this? It must be. It must be. If it's to be interpreted by a general believer, it must be in the word. It must be according to the word of God. Dreaming two eggs. There is nothing about eggs in the Bible. So that one, we don't entertain it. Because it must match with the word of God. Now, God does not usually make people, in fact, to dream dreams of lotto numbers. <laughs> because it's now contradicting the word which says, I shall bless the work of your hands, not of a donkey running in a borrowed God does not bless the work of a lot of men. He blesses the work of your hands. Everybody lift your hands and say, God blesses my hands. Now listen to me very well. That's why Christians who bet, who go for lotto, they lose money. 
Do you know why? Because lotto betting it's laziness. God does not bless laziness. You will waste your money. It's very rare to see, and let me tell you the truth, a Christian winning, okay, grand challenge. I have not seen it. You can buy, sign those things, your name will not be called. But someone who went to a traditional healer can win, okay, grand challenge. Why? Because that devil wants to encourage him to continue coming to his kingdom. But a child of God fails to win. Why? God wants to discourage you from laziness. Because these are two different kingdoms. The kingdom of the devil gives laziness. The kingdom of God wants you to use your hands. He blesses the work of your hands. Which means if you want God to bless you in betting, you must own a betting company. It's now works of your hands. And the people are now coming to bet in your company as you make money. It's now your company which you are running and the people who are dreaming whatever they are dreams of numbers, they are coming and giving you money. Or you do your own borrowed like race course and you put horses there which you are rearing yourself and feeding. Your hands must be working, putting lawn, nice lawn on that race course. And people come to use your horses. And they bet there. It's business. You are working. You are using your hands. God blesses the work of your hands. That's why I want Mama Sururu to do a teaching on all the people that went even to Esgodini for gold mining. Because I am seeing some are just running with $50 to register ignorantly, thinking once I register and I'm given a claim, gold will just go pam pum and it's up there and you pick it. No, I said go into mining. So you must understand what is mining. You shall need to dig. You need how to end Omakorokos. You need to know how to do things. It's work. You can lose your money. Not just running, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God, yes. Do you know what it means to mine? It's not lotto. There is a lot of work there. There is a lot of investment. Your business can collapse. If there is no knowledge. Because we don't want people who are full of tongues but no brains. And you are just getting into poverty with the tongues. You must think. You must have knowledge. So I told Mama Sururu that please I am sensing it in my spirit. That some people are thinking they are just going to pick gold on top of their soil. Those who pick it might be one or two just as a prophet. But everyone must mine gold. I said go into mining. I didn't say go into picking gold. I said go into mining. So you must know what is called. The prophet says mining. So I said, I want them to be taught this Saturday, this Saturday, everyone who went to Esgodin, two o'clock, you must be here. You bought something. I want you to be taught because you can lose money. Because I have seen her eh, doing mining. I have gone to Mama Surura. I have seen what she's doing. So I know she can teach you. 
She has dealt with Emma. She has dealt with all these organizations. I see her work is even recognized. So she can teach you how to handle those boys. Because you can just go with the man to Makorokosa. They will tell you, we want cigarettes to dig for you. We want food. We want this. And you go there, you give them everything. You have never consulted a person who is in that business. And they smoke your money. They eat everything there. And you come back. You are now frustrated. But the prophet said, now I have lost my money. No, a prophecy without wisdom is dangerous. I didn't say go and throw your money in the bin. That's not mine. You need wisdom. How do you monitor those things? Because they can actually dig and get samples of gold. They know the stones. Put them aside. Go somewhere where there is no and heap and even take some stones, rubbles. Because you know nothing and put them there and say, Mama, we have finished, we worked. And you go with those, no money at the stamp mill. No gold is coming, your gold was stolen. But did I not prophesy? I prophesied. But you went without knowledge. Ah, pepuka, muka, wake up, you have knowledge. Don't just get into things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So all the women who went with their $50 they, or anyone in gold come, I am also bringing another expert also in mining of gold so that people can understand he is under minister of mining so he can assist people because some are just running and say, ah, $50 only. No, there is a lot of money that must be invested there. Otherwise, you'll be frustrated. Because having a peg, being pegged, having a peg of gold, where they say, this is your peg. You will hear someone saying, I now have a gold mine. You have to gold mine, Papa.